this legislature that we're dealing with now has absolutely um, no interest, it appears, on the effects of small business. <laughs>
when it comes to attacks on small businesses. Out of the many years before NFIB, you were a contract lobbyist before, has it ever been more vicious to be a small business owner from your point of view? I mean attacks from the state legislature. Regulatory from the government that, uh, and from the, from the legislature. Regulatory, local government, state government. Be honest. <laughs> God's listening. God's listening. The, I'd say the last when Republicans lost control, when when they were not able to hold the chamber or two chambers, or at one time we had all three chambers. Okay. Once once they lost stopping power, in once, other words, they could exactly they, they couldn't there, stop a bad thing from happening. We have no backstop now. And uh, until the new legislators took office in 23, the previous crop, you could work with to some extent. They were more of the, um, uh, they'd look at both sides. They, it's, a lot of them would talk to us and say, hey, what's this going to do to you? Because you're right, it, you know, a big business would be all for giant track tax credit or development in that. And, um, and they would come to us and, and say, what's, what's this made for you all? I mean, for instance, Excel loves all the new green energy Oh, abso ab absolutely. You know, they're raking in more money than ever. They get to sell more stuff. They get to build more stuff. They're raking in more and more money. But your businesses, any manufacturing, for it. you get to pay we an get extra. To pay. Right, you get to pay for it. And we should be happy, according to them. Right. We, we, should be ha we should be happy. Let me fast forward. This legislature that we're dealing with now has absolutely um, no interest it appears, on the effects of small business. They don't understand that small business owners, um, when you look at the regulatory environment, not only in Colorado, but nationally, a small business under 50 employees will pay approximately $11,000 per year per employee for regulatory compliance. Big business pay about $6,000. Say that again. Let's, let, let's just stop there. You know, until you own a small business, I owned a small business. Mm -hmm. Until you own a small business, you have no idea That's right. how much time you spend not raising money, not selling your product, not improving your business, not trying to make your customers happy, not trying to make your product better, but filling out forms That's or right. spending money and time trying to comply. You call it compliance. So mm -hmm. you're telling me that for every employee a small business has, let's say you have 10 employees, right. you're going to spend how much? 11, it's rated at, uh, this was from a crane, crane and crane study a few years ago. They, they tagged the total cost of the regulatory environment um, at two, $2.75 trillion nationally. You, that breaks down for small businesses. Our, our studies ha have shown that the small business owner will spend $11,000 per employee versus $6,000. Why is it now so much more the, for the small guy with 10 employees compared to a big business with 500 in Colorado? Because a lot of what has to be done, a lot of what has to be done to comply the owner can't do it. The owner isn't does isn't versed enough, and the issue, the tax issue, uh, the um, wage and hour issues, the unemployment issue. A lot of times, they have to bring in outside sources, outside basically an outside contractor to help them. I I try to get legislators in the building to understand. My members don't have an in-house legal department. They don't have an in-house HR department. And the business owner is not only 
he does he or she not only owns the business, but they also are the HR manager, right. the janitor, the inventory control, the counselor, uh, if they have they have they have employees. And um, you know, filing, for instance, they get a complaint by an employee for you changed my shift without telling me or didn't give me enough warning or you made, you changed my shift and now I have to work nights and that's retaliation. Well, it's not handled in-house. A charge like that, owner has to go to the phone, pick up a f the phone and call the attorney. And the minute you call an attorney on that type of issue, you're looking at 400 to $500 an hour. And that's how they're treated. Now, policymakers love to talk about their devotion, their, their gratitude to small business owners, for small business owners. They're the backbone of the economy. They're the backbone of the Main Street economy. They employ over half. But what happens when the lights go out and the TV cameras are shut off? Who do they run to? They don't run to the small business owner. They run to the big donors. And those aren't the small it business owners. It goes owners. back to the diffuse. The diffuse there you issue. go. All right, well, let's talk about some case in points. Now we're, we're struggling with the Family Leave Act. Now, mm -hmm. this was voted on by the people. And this is a completely unworkable uh, family leave um, plan. And we're paying for it. So any employer that has more than 10 employees, it's almost a 1% mm -hmm. payroll tax split between employer and employee. This is a hefty tax. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go up like this. Mm -hmm. Without a vote of the people, it's going to get bumped up to 1.2% mm -hmm. within a few years, uh, split between employer and employee. By the way, that's all your money. It would have come out, it's going to come out of your paycheck. You know, the employer, you know, that part that comes out of his pay, his pay, well, that's just your money anyway. It would have mm -hmm. gone to the employee anyway. Right. I always love that part. Oh, the employer pays for it. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like that... Uh, half FICA, you know, that, you know, <laughs> you know, the, the uh, payroll tax. Yeah. I would love to pass a law. You want, you want to take care of all this? If I could wave the wand, all withholdings would go away. And the uh, employer side of all payroll taxes, uh, mm -hmm. FICA and all that would go away. All that would go onto your payroll, the employee's payroll, and the employee would have to withhold his own and every quarter or so, he'd have to write out his own check and deposit it to the feds. And then employees would see exactly how much is being taken out of his or her paycheck. Mm -hmm. And then they get an idea, oh my God, I'm losing how much money? Yeah. Instead of the employer being the one to do the bookkeeping and, and the banker form taking all the money. For, oh, this is... Mm -hmm. And so when you get that pay... At, um, after you do your uh, pay, uh, uh, your taxes on April 15th, go, oh, I got a refund. It was your money. It was your money uh, to start <clears throat> with. This requires employers to do all the bookkeeping, mm -hmm. not the employees. What is, for a small businessman, what does this really mean? For a small business, what does the new Family Leave Act really entail? Well, uh, compliance number one, from the compliance standpoint, uh, 50 uh, businesses with 50 or fewer employees are going to have a real hard time just figuring out the compliance. Again, because they don't have in-house personnel to help them. They're going to have to bring outside uh, so, uh, resources in. Um, the cost... When you say outside resources, what, what do you mean? They're going to have to bring in um, a, like a third-party administrator or, or something to help them determine, okay... I mean, the same way that... Know, that I needed to go hire somebody to do payroll. There you go. They're going to have to hire somebody to, to handle paying somebody mm -hmm. to do the maternity leave. And also, i got to go find somebody to fill in during maternity leave right. and the rest. Well, and, and they're going to have to have legal help on figuring out just what is required when an employee wants to take a leave. How, how do they 
apply for that leave? How, what do they have to give the employer? They, can they just say, I'm taking today off? They can take partial leave. They can take incremental leave, uh, half day, full day. And um, uh, all that is, uh, you're going to have to comply with every one of those instances. I don't think people understand how crazy this law is. You can now, if someone you care about, could be your buddy, who needs your help, you can take every Friday off for, the, for a full year mm -hmm. and go skiing with him and, and get paid 90% of what, what, what you make. Yeah, this is a deal. Your, your, average weekly benef your average weekly benefit. Now we have a bill, which this was not in the initiative that was passed, but now we have a bill that says, if you are working two jobs or for some reason you're working three jobs, you want to take leave from job A, then your benefit's going to be based on your w average weekly pay from job A. Right. It's also going to be based on your wage that you're earning from B and C. We, we still don't know, well, wait a minute, isn't this going to incre actually increase the benefit, artificially inflate a benefit? And uh, we have those say, oh, no, no, this was the original intent. Well, I'm sorry, but the original intent was not in the language of the initiative. If it was the uh, original intent that I got to use all, th all my earnings to figure out my average weekly benefit under it. When I'm only taking leave for one, from one job, but I get to keep working at two, but yet part of that leave benefit is going to be based on what I'm, mm. excuse me, earning at the two jobs I'm still working. We have no idea what this is gonna look like in practice. I will tell you, it's not gonna last that long. This thing is gonna go bankrupt within years. It, 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 uh, likely will. Uh, you, you know, they talked about this that entire summer. We had the Family Leave Task Force. The bill, the bill sponsors, to their credit, said, "Listen, this we're not getting anywhere. Let's have a task force." And we agreed to it. We had a member sitting on that task force for the entire summer. The task force met. And even before the report was issued, next thing we know, we're reading in the paper, there's an initiative been pulled. You mean mm. to, put it, to put the whole thing on the ballot? To put it all on the ballot. Yeah, not a word during the, Nothing. During the, during Nothing. the task force. So in other words, during this task force that your organization is part of to try to come up with a plan to put something through the, through the legislature to address this issue of family leave, Without you even knowing, they just put it on the ballot. They just they just put it on the. On now they're the like ballot. negotiating in good faith. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So give me give me a picture of this because Colorado has always been, and growing up here, it's always been the kind of place where people have come to start a business. Mm -hmm. They've come here to risk what they have because they know this is an entrepreneur's paradise. They've come here to risk their time, their talents their fortunes. They've come here to work. Whether it was brewmasters a hundred years ago, or ranchers, or miners, or tech entrepreneurs today, or people who are trying their hand at new whiskey, they've come here to risk. And I mean this not like gambling when people hear right. risk. I mean risk right. like in true capitalism, which is I think I can do something better, and if I build it better, I can make this work. Now they've got to, as you say, deal with compliance. So what I hear is you will comply. Talk to me about what that means because when you start off in a garage industry, and I think mm -hmm. some of our best business guys, I think about Tim Gill, who has funded so much of this takeover of Colorado mm -hmm. by progressives, literally started in his garage. If any of these folks should know about this, you think it would be the guys who took over this progressive um, revolution in Colorado. What are some of your members really dealing with? Give me some grit on this. Give me an well, idea of what's happened in the last few years 
that makes it tough for a small business? Give me a regulation. Give me, give me a story. What I want, what I want to get out there, and it goes with what you're asking, is, you know, you and I spoke. I've been at NFIB for 18 years. Until recently, I never had members telling me, you know what? <clears throat> We've built a good business. We put money aside. We're, we're comfortable. We really don't have anybody to pass the business on to or anybody who wants to buy the business. We're just going to shut it down. Oh, my God. They might have anywhere from 8 to 15 employees. Now, those are fi there's 15 employees out of, out of a job. But on top of that, what I hear, and I hear it more and more often, is, you know, Tony, if we would have had all this when we started the business as far as having to comply wage and hours, uh, pay equity, you know, every year we have a pay equity bill. What's a pay equity bill? Oh, well, everybody has to be paid the same. Uh, no differential, basically. And you have to, you know, we had companies who would not because of a bill, Senate Bill 85 passed, I believe it was in 21, because of that bill, they would not post or recruit in Colorado because of our pay equity laws that were, were passed. But more and more I'm hearing from members, I would have never done it. I would have never started the business. Really? If I knew what it was going to end so up. So you're hearing from, from people who've built their family businesses and they yeah. say, if I knew what was coming, I never would have started they it. They would have never started it, yeah. Or built it to where they were hiring employees and, and uh, you know, who's, um, uh, where do 16-year-olds, 18-year-olds get their first job experience? It's not at Ball Aerospace. It's it's not at Hewlett Packard. It's you know it's 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 that Bronco Burger. I remember Bronco. Bronco Burger on Littleton Boulevard. Yeah, I was a lifeguard for four fifty an hour. That was you know uh, on top of a golf caddy. <laughs> yeah, four fifty an hour. Yeah, I got four fifty an hour as a lifeguard. It's not bad at all. No, nice suntan. And, I was loading uh, trucks for four dollars an hour. Yeah, and um, but. But the regulatory uh, scheme of things, the takeover, only 46% of my membership can even afford to offer their employees health insurance benefits because of the uh, way the markets have done and the regulations that we've imposed. We have an insurance commissioner that truly, I believe, uh, is intent on controlling our entire insurance industry in Colorado um and wants um social insurance uh wants us headed what is social insurance well we're going to have a bill to study that we're going to have a bill there is a bill out to uh conduct a study for a publicly financed health care plan a health care program in colorado and um uh I mean, government-run health care. Government, yeah, basically, I was being nice. It's, but yeah, government-run health care. Um, last year, two years, we've had bills stating to health insurance companies, you must, in the next three years, lower your premiums by 20%. Well, without any, and they make these demands, excuse me, without any any effort to appreciate the market and you know they have to be they have a margin that they have to operate on well when you demand that a carrier lower their rates 15 to 20 percent in two years otherwise you're going to institute a public option type plan Nationalized you see healthcare. where you see where we're going right. We have the public option. The public option is here. Uh, uh, health insurance carriers have been instructed under the bill 
you will lower your premiums. We've had, I know for a fact, we had a health insurance company a year and two years ago. All rates are approved by the insurance commissioner. They filed a rate decrease at 12%. He wouldn't approve it. Because? He wants six, gave him six. Well, because you want this social, you want a public option. You're not going so, to make it any easier for health insurance wait, carriers. Wait, 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 you're, you're twisting my brain here. <laughs> so the insurance company said, we will cut rates by 12%, as a customer, that sounds pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And the insurance commissioner here in Colorado said, no, I'll only let you cut it by 6% mm -hmm. because he wants high rates of insurance so that it makes it easier to socialize health care? Well, it, it makes the point that health and commercial or private. private health insurance is not the answer. They take advantage of the customers and... Um, and, and the idea here is to push for a social program. That's terrifying. It, it, well, it, it, it is. It All is. Right. We have no, they talk about a free market in healthcare. We have no free market in healthcare. It's not a free market. So help me with some of these things that feel so very good, but your members probably despise it. For as long as I can remember, Colorado had a state minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I despise the minimum wage, not for economic reasons, even though that's bad enough. Right. It's bad enough when uh, we keep young people from getting employment. It's bad enough when we keep um, people from being able to get their first jobs. I believe the minimum wage is not just bad policy. I believe it is immoral policy mm -hmm. because whenever we keep two people who want to be together in a relationship, and government says, no, it's too perverse. Uh, you can't have that relationship. That's wrong. We've done that in so many areas. In fact, I find it wild that the progressives, and rightly so, have said, you know what? It's wrong to keep loving people uh, apart. If they want to get married, great. If they want to have a relationship, great. If gays want to be together and live together, Great. If they want to get married, great. But if somebody wants to have a relationship where one's an employer and one's an employee, but we don't like what they've agreed to on, on price, that is so perverse, we will not mm -hmm. allow it. So it's come, it's come to my realization that these people only tolerate consensual relationships if people are naked. Otherwise, it's just too perverse for them. Mm -hmm. And I really find it intolerant and disgusting. I really do. And that people, free people, should be able to have the relationships of their choosing. That's what free people are about, consensual relationships. My guess is your members probably don't think about it the same way I do. They probably think about this as trying to keep their businesses going. Why is it now that the changing of a statewide minimum wage now has been unleashed and localities can raise the minimum wage, but they can't lower a minimum wage. Denver's minimum wage is now what? 1730. 1730. Why is that a problem for any of your members? Well, don't they like poor people? Oh, don't they want a livable wage? That's How what, evil are they? That's what they want. That's what government wants you to believe that government knows best. That's and that's the way it's always been is government believes they know better than the business owner. Surveys show that our membership over half pay above minimum wage. And the reason being, if you want good employees today, you're not going to get good employees for the minimum wage. The minimum wage, one could say, is outdated or is passe. It's not needed because I still have 45% of our membership saying, we have open jobs. 
but we mm -hmm. don't have anybody to fill them. We're, we'll take we'll take all the workers you can. You you can send us. They're already paying far above the minimum wage now. So the minimum wage really was a non-issue um, now for tipped employees and um, small restaurants. Yeah, that can be that can be a a problem, but but I don't hear I'm not hearing that it's a problem. I'm not hearing that um, uh, the increase now Denver that seventeen dollar bomb. I know there were some who said, "Listen, we're just going to have to reduce employees." You know, we're just going to have to cut back, and um, and you're going to have but, to start automating. And you're going to have to. Uh, how many fast food restaurants do you go into now, when you don't have anybody at the counter? You got a kiosk, you know, and you got pictures and touch your fries and right. touch your milkshake and and uh, and that's what it's going to come to. Uh, it's going to come to uh, uh, strict automation. And um, uh, so you can, uh, you know, if, if I need a good employee, I have to be willing to pay what it's going to cost to, to have that employee. So but it's a, going to come back and benefit me and everybody else. Out of all the issues that have popped up, what are the top two or three over the last few years? What, what has been the most destructive for small business in Colorado? Oh, um, I'd have to say a lot of the wage uh, wage and hour legislation that we've had, the pay wage equity. Wage and hour legislation, the wage, what does that mean? Well, the pay equity, how you manage your employees, the unemployment well, help, help trust fund. You, I mean, you, you say pay inequity, what does that mean? Well, to a lot of people, they believe that and there are figures that that show men have earned more than women for basically the same same work but nobody's ever really looked at why is that and there's evidence that this lack is a law time, that says when you post a job you have to post the pay range for the job, the, the pay range you have to um, you have to make it available. To, you have to post to everybody. You can't just post to um, you know everybody has to have an opportunity to apply for that job, regardless of qualifications. That's why regardless a lot, of qualifications, regardless of qualification, that's why companies would not do advertise, advertise here. Wasn't it funny that this became a Wall Street Journal? And That's national right. story of how many companies wouldn't hire people in Colorado. In Car they wouldn't. They wouldn't recruit in in Colorado. If you they're work just here, now starting to come back. Well, it's because if you're if you're looking for a remote worker, they're not going to hire you in Colorado because they don't mm -hmm. want to put those restrictions on their employees. They don't want to say um, that they're going to accept the applications from anybody. They mm -hmm. want to say we want people with these qualifications. Uh, that's not all that unusual. It was it was really wild to see Colorado singled out, including from left-leaning organizations like PETA saying, <laughs> we will not accept any applications from Colorado because these work rules are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We're not we're not going to do that. Well and and look at look at what we just did and to the legislature uh, uh, some of the Democrats uh, new Democrats in the legislature uh, who who did step in with House Bill 1118, the uh, predictive scheduling that we were going through, that bill. Explain that one and, in and, English. Well, you had to... Uh, 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 can I take a shot at it? Sure. You're, you're just too kind. You're just... You're just <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's and not I understand it. You're a lobbyist. <laughs> this bill was to unionize people without calling it unionize. Mm -hmm. This was basically to put union rules into every private <laughs> shop and um, uh, tell employers to run their shops as if it was a union shop and uh, uh, put in all these ridiculous union rules saying, here's how you have to schedule people, here's how you have to do time off, mm -hmm. here's how you have to use seniority, here's how you have to uh, schedule this person who has seniority and that person who doesn't, 
And if you're changing them, you have to do weeks worth of advance. It was handcuffs, particularly for people with small businesses. Mm -hmm. It was unworkable. How'd I do? You, well, you did. You captured the you captured the essence, the, the essence of it uh, very well, very 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 well. What was disheartening is when business groups who went in against this were vilified by not understanding or spreading misinformation. Or I was told. This would only, why, why are you concerned? This only affects employers with 250 employees. And I was, at first I was dumbfounded and then I finally said, read the bill. Read your, read the bill. Uh, because if you were a little Subway sandwich shop, you had six employees, what are you? You're a franchise. You are covered by this bill. Wow. So uh, if you contract for services with someone who is covered, then you are covered. It, it was a, just a disaster. It was a disaster. Again, we made national news. The idea, uh, just the bill stopped. It, it, it got killed in a committee. Mm -hmm. You and I have been around long enough to know bad ideas Come back. never die. That's that right. building is the home of the walking dead. Mm -hmm. And now that um, these things are, are coming back faster and faster, and I haven't seen it. So let me ask you this. You've been doing this for a long time. Um, uh, let me finish it up with kind of where we started. When it comes to people trying to start businesses, when it comes to people trying to, to risk their capital, risk their time, risk their talents, you said that many of your old timers, mm -hmm. the people who started businesses, now are just letting them fizzle out. Yeah. And a lot of them are saying, yeah. you know, I, I, I can't sell them, um, can't give them to my kids, we're just, we're, we're packing mm -hmm. up and we're, that's that. And it breaks my heart. Because that, that's really the Colorado story. Those, mm -hmm. those stories are the Colorado story. That's right. Not, not, not Elon Musk moving Tesla in here. That's not the Colorado story. Mm -hmm. it's, it's Tim Gill starting Quark here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. That's the Colorado story. That's right. Or look at Rock Mount, you know, down on Rock Mount Ranch where, I, I mean... The company's been around for over a hundred years, and you know it's a it's a landmark. Anybody who comes to Denver, they know about Rockmont. You see country western singers, you see actors, yeah. and and that they're all wearing Rockmont shirts. But it's companies like that that built Colorado. Now, for, they're fortunate is they're still here. But how long? And could they start here now? And could they start up now? I, uh, a startup today, I don't, I don't know what the statistics would say is the lifespan. You didn't, look, but I want to focus it on this question. Let's leave it here. All the years you've been mm -hmm. lobbying, all the years you've seen this, and I, I get it. We haven't seen, we don't have the backstop of a split house. Mm -hmm. um, of having having one of the three branches, you know, one of the uh, uh, in Republican hands, just so we could stop the craziness. How crazy is it? Have you ever seen it this unfriendly to small business? No, to be honest, no, I I, I haven't. It is, it's as if they don't care. They know it's wrong, but they don't care. And that, and that's what it really seems like sometimes, like with 1218. My God, we had eight hours of testimony. And, and um, you know, owners of restaurants um, uh, who started with nothing and built these restaurants. Um, and, and you could tell that a lot of the committee members 
It was just, there were a few that, well, you could do it this way. They always know better. You know, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's, um, when I was growing up and we were, oh, well, we're not the same age. I, I think you I, are at I, least 50 years older than yeah, I am. Probably, probably. But I can remember thinking sometimes, boy, did I pull one over on mom and dad. Boy, did I pull one over. And probably when I was. I, I think in, I'm still pulling one over yeah. on my mom. <laughs> When when I turned about 21 or so, God, I was amazed how smart oh, yeah. my, parents, <laughs> my parents got like that. And that's what we're seeing. These people think we're, we don't know. And, oh, you'll be okay. You, can, you ever run a business? You ever sign the front side of a paycheck? No, I, they only I use didn't Venmo. think so. You know, they, they only know. use Venmo. <laughs> So the point, but you you said you haven't seen it this bad. What you what you heard of of saying, they don't respect us. They don't understand. They don't get it. They don't get that small businesses are not just smaller versions of a big business. That's what they don't get. It it's entirely a different mindset. Are they hostile to you? When I say, are they hostile to small business? I wouldn't say, I don't think I'd go as far as to say hostile. They're very cautious. Uh, I can tell there's a, there's a trust issue there. You know, when you try to talk to a legislator uh, about a bill that you have concerns with and they tell you to go talk to this lobbyist yeah. over there, that's what we're seeing more of. Listen, every legislator, you've been in this game. Mm -hmm. Every legislator plays nicey nice so well. They they <laughs> they play kissy face really well. They tell you what you want to hear, and then they pass these things that destroy your industry, destroy mm -hmm. your business, destroy the economy, and clutter up regulatory things so much that you can't do your business. I hear people tell me they could not do what they do now if they had to start that's, what they that's, do now. And that's I've heard what I'm it here. for a decade now. I've heard people say, if I had to start now, I couldn't do it in this town, I couldn't do it in this city, mm -hmm. I couldn't do it in this state. And I'm starting to hear people say, I couldn't do it in, in this country, which, which just breaks my heart. It really mm -hmm. does. Yeah. If, very last question. If you could get that legislature or this administration, because I don't think people understand the rulemaking power of what goes on in the Polis administration, if you could get them to change one thing, to pass one law, rescind one law, rescind one rule, change one rule, one thing, what wow. would it be? Wow. They're listening right now and they They're, go, oh, the Gagliardi wants us to do this. <laughs> We're going to get it done this afternoon. What would it be for your members? You know, just based on what I've had to deal with for two years now, I'd have to say... Come clean with what's going on with the unemployment trust fund. And if they did, what would they say? That there's been rampant abuse, abuse and fraud. Abuse and, and, and misuse. We have a bill now that, that, you know, we're still not solvent. Our trust fund is still not solvent. Um, we had an opportunity uh, at that time last year, Senator Woodward had a bill that would have fully funded our, our, our UI trust fund and paid back the federal, federal government instead. And to the governor's credit, I know the governor was getting pressure, but to his credit, he earmarked 600 million to go into the trust fund. Well, when we saw that bill, that bill expanded programs like nothing. We needed, we needed the money to go into the trust fund in a conversation, not expand social programs. What's wrong with a trust fund? Well, now there's a bill that says uh, if you are laid off through no fault of your own, you lose your job through no fault of your own, you're available for work, you're looking for work, and you have dependent children under the age of 18, then each one of them are going to get $35 a week. That's coming out of the trust fund. Now, 
I believe there could be a leg legal issue there because the trust fund is not funded by employees. The trust fund is paid for by employers through unemployment taxes. To take unemployment dollars and pay them to somebody who doesn't qualify for unemployment, we believe there's a legal question there. But there's too many, if you looked at Senate Bill 234 and all the programs that it provided for and the expansions of benefits, the writing's on the wall. We're going to have problems. We're going to have problems. Tony, thanks for everything you do. I think the work you do is, is, is crucial. It's hard. Better to you than me and your members. <laughs> your members really are the spirit of Colorado. Yes, I think they so. are. I really yes, think more small businesses ought to get that sign in front of their window. And I think people, when they walk by and see that NFIB sign, uh, ought to walk in and, and do some business with those places. People want to want to join up. Um, uh, small businesses want to learn more. Where do they go? Uh, NFIB.com. NFIB.com. We got our small business coming, our small business day coming up on the 30th of this month. And uh, it's a good place to meet up with other small business owners. And and, and it um, only costs, what, $30,000 a year to join the yeah. NFIB? Uh, we're actually, actually, you know, uh, we're very flexible in member dues. Uh, you know, that's entirely outside my, my end. But uh, you can go on the website. You set your own dues level and uh, where you need to be, you know, and... Um, uh, but, but and you, also the facility you have is incredible. The swimming pool is great. No. The steam room <laughs> I've ever seen it. The poker room is just incredible. The wet bar. Oh my God. Yeah. Remarkable. You, you know, a great asset that we have and I, and I'm always proud of it is our NFIB small business legal center that, uh, any member, any member can call and get advice. Uh, one advice we're given, we've been given for the last two or three years, is if you don't have an HR manual, you better get one. And it especially it, now. And and everything better be in that in that manual, uh, because it's imperative. That's the first thing they're asking now. If you ever uh, come under an audit, it's funny that a small business. I'll, I'll leave it at this. It's funny that a small business, you're so busy trying to make payroll, you mm -hmm. don't think about the need to have the HR manual, mm -hmm. which when things go bad, you're gonna want to That's have right. that. And you've you're got gonna it there wish, for them. And, and we have uh, we have the legal center and it's based in DC that gives assistance with how to set one up, how to develop one, what should be in it. And uh, we don't represent um, in, a, in cases, but we can also always offer you know, a pathway. Tony, thanks something. so much. Thank you, John. Keep up the Thank fight. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you enjoyed that conversation, by all means, click one of these other great programs. We have the best conversations with the most fascinating Coloradans. And subscribe to our channel. Just click down below and hit that little bell button, too. You don't want to miss a single show.